Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Hendy from AndroidAuthority.com, and today we're taking a look at the first Android 11 beta. Anybody who has kept up with the developer previews until this point isn't actually going to see too many new features. The biggest change is Google switching their marketing rhetoric to something a little more consumer focused rather than developer focused. The official blog post talks a lot more about consumer facing features rather than developer APIs like we saw in previous releases. Android 11 is going to revolve around three things, people, control, and privacy. Most of these changes were in earlier developer previews, but now Google is telling us that they're focusing most on it, so we'll go through these three big things and tell you what they're all about. For the people aspect of things, Google wants to put our instant messages and text messages ahead of everything else. Their logic is that person-to-person -person communication is more valuable than any other interaction that we have with our phones, and that's a sentiment we don't necessarily disagree with. It all starts with the notification shade before Android 11. All the notifications were kind of just tossed in the same space without any regards to organization. Android 11 changes this by organizing all of your notifications between conversations, alerting notifications, and silent notifications. The categories are fairly self-explanatory. Conversations is where your messages appear from actual people, so you have your Telegram, your Discord, your text messages, etc., all in this space. Below that is the alerting notifications for things like email, game notifications, and stuff like that. Finally, under silent notifications, you have things like USB debugging, fast charging, and other silent notification type stuff. Moving right along, the Android 11 beta gives full access to Bubbles now. Bubbles are usable system-wide by default, and they have moved out of the developer options and under apps and notifications, then notifications, and then finally the bubble setting. You still have to take it on in the developer settings in this beta, but it's no longer hiding in only that location. You can still access notification history as well, but it did change locations. You now click the manage button at the bottom of the notification shade, then click the notification history option in the settings. Unfortunately, it seems like Bubbles isn't working for some folks. I tried turning it on in the developer options, but it didn't work and it turns itself back off all on its own. This will likely get fixed in a future beta, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm using B-roll of Facebook Messenger since that's basically what it's gonna look like anyway. Rounding out the people features is a consolidated keyboard suggestions experience that lets the input method securely offer context-specific stuff and a voice access feature upgrade that lets the phone use screen context for better contextually aware labels. The second big thing Google talked about with Android 11 is control. We saw evidence of this in previous developer previews and it has since rolled out. If you long press the power button, you now get instant access to all of your smart home stuff if you have it. This actually worked perfectly right out of the gate for me with all of my previously set up home tech. I was able to mess with my Philips Hue lights and my Ecobee thermostat without any actual work on my end, which I appreciate. There is also a shortcut for Google Pay if you want that. I use LG Pay right now, so I kind of left that option alone, but it is an option. The other big change is for media controls. They no longer sit in the notification area, but have now moved to the quick settings area. This will be enabled by default in future betas, but for now you have to use the developer options to turn media resumption on and then reboot the phone in order to make this work. This is a little bit weird. It works fine with most media apps, but seems to hiccup a lot with YouTube and any other app that uses picture-in-picture -picture mode. That's probably why it's an optional feature right now. However, its placement and functionality is actually kind of nice because your media is always at the top and it's never buried within your notifications. Plus, if you ever stop the video or audio entirely, the window stays with the last thing that it had loaded so you can hit play and resume at a moment's notice. A little niche, admittedly, but a neat feature overall. The final pillar in Google's trio of keywords is privacy. We already discussed the new permission system in a previous video, but as a refresher, Google is enabling one-time permissions for applications when you don't want blanket access granted all the time. However, the bigger and perhaps more important change is the permissions auto reset. Android 11 will automatically revoke permissions for an application you haven't used in a long time. Android 11 tells you when it does this, so you can re-enable the permissions again manually later if you want to. This keeps applications from doing things in the background long after you stop using them. Additionally, Android 11 will make applications ask you for background location permissions in order to prevent location abuse. This should curtail a lot of problems with many applications that use your location to gather data when they don't actually need to. Finally, Google announced a Google Play system update function last year, but added over a dozen new modules this year for quicker updates and better security. 
I know it doesn't seem like a whole lot of stuff, but this is on top of all of the other things that Google is doing with Android 11. The previous stuff is just the stuff that Google wanted everybody to talk about, so we talked about it. There are other things in the pipeline as well though. We discussed most of it in previous videos, and again, we'll link those in the video description if you want to see more. However, some highlights include a new keyboard transition API for smoother keyboard use and improved call screening service APIs with more functionality. There are also some minor changes to other OS elements. For instance, there is now more granular gesture tweaking in the settings and airplane mode won't kill your Bluetooth music if you still have it on. You can still pin apps to the sharing menu like you could in previous developer previews and Android 11 includes a contextually aware dark mode. Additionally, the new hinge angle addition to the Android X API lets developers build their apps for both vertical and horizontal foldables and there is a new wallpaper picker and screenshot UI as well. Of course, this all rests on the back of updates to Android app and game development platforms like Kotlin and Jetpack so developers can include all of these fun new features more easily. And as I said a moment ago, we discussed all of this more in depth in our earlier development preview videos, so I encourage you to check those out for more details. Now, we get to the two final questions. Is there an Easter egg? Um, yes and no. The old functionality was restored, so tapping on the Android version will take you to Android 10's Easter egg for some reason. I guess we'll see the Android 11 Easter egg later this year. And then finally, can you flash this? And for that, I say yes. This release was obviously aimed at consumers like us and those who don't mind the usual issues when dealing with beta software can absolutely use this as a daily driver. Again though, there are bugs and some stuff that needs polished up, but unlike the developer previews, this release feels like it's more for us consumers than for developers. So have at it, and uh, just don't blame me if you run into an obnoxious bug that I missed and you can't fix. And that about does it for this one, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do, and if not, you still know what to do. Check out all of the links in the video description for more information about Android 11, and as always, thanks for watching everybody, and have a wonderful day.